Hey guys, uh, there's not a lot of info out there right now on these hype train dab motors. Uh, these are the 1104 7500 kV uh, motors for Motor Riot. So I thought it would be cool to just throw a video up there and talk about my initial impressions of these motors um, and how they compare to what I had been using, which is also a 7400, I'm sorry, 7500 uh, 1104. This is from Full Speed. Um, this is the motor that comes on the Leader 120, and I like this motor a lot on three cells. Um, it's a little, a little anemic on 2S for me, um, especially considering I'm running two cameras on this extra weight. But on three cells, it seems to do, seems to do all right. It's got um, not quite a five-inch feel, but you know, it's a, it's a good balance of not murdering your batteries and um, uh, having enough power to do what you can do with a quad this size. Anyway, um, yeah, I was I saw when these came out from Motorrite, I was hoping that they would be uh, as good as the big version of the Hype Train um, that I'm running here on my Rooster. I really like these motors um, for a number of reasons, but the point is this motor right here, is it worth it? Is it worth a couple extra bucks? Um, so I'll just tell you right off the bat, uh, yeah, I think it is only talking about three bucks or so difference between a cheap motor and uh, something better. So yeah, I think it's worth splurging and paying a couple extra bucks. Um, so a little bit more on my initial thoughts. There weren't any pictures on the website of the bottom of the motor, but that's what it looks like. Um, two screws, I guess that's all you need to hold a motor in. I've always run three or four screws, but um, yeah, this seems to work. I uh, feel like I would have liked to have three screws at least, or three sc screw holes, but um, can't really complain since it's working. Um, I've not soft mounted these just because it seemed like there wasn't a lot of area to work with, but I might go back and do that. Um, yeah, so the bottom's a little strange, a little different, very, very exposed, um, but they run cool. I noticed when I was uh, doing some tuning and just seeing how many filters I could remove uh, and testing the heat, these seem to do better than the other motors um, in terms of dissipating heat when I started pushing them. Um, what else? They weigh, you can find this out on the website, but this was something I thought was interesting. So Hype Train Motor weighs, let's get that off of there. Hype Train Motor weighs 5.7 grams. This is the full speed motor coming in at 5.0. So actually a little lighter on these guys, um, which surprised me. Um, I thought, you know, given the open bottom that these would be a little lighter, but they're not. Um, I think perhaps why, if you look at the bottom of these, you can see that the, the shaft is a little more robust. Everything's just a little beefier um, on the Rotorite motor compared to the full speed motor. Now, a lot of people like these uh, Emacs motors. I haven't run them yet. I plan to throw them on a different build. Uh, this is the 1106-6000. I'm assuming it's gonna be in the ballpark um, with these guys. Uh, but I did I did notice, when I throw that on the scale, um, 7.3. This thing is a pig compared to, you put these side by side and it's almost comical, uh, the difference in size. So, yeah, the Hype Train is very sleek, low profile, um, seems to be very well made. Um, tolerances are tight with the magnets. Um, magnets are not super stiff. They're actually, of the three motors here, these are the least stiff, um, which might be good if your builds suffer from um, noise. Uh, my assumption would be less you know, slightly less on the magnets, uh, less noise. Anyway, the the magnets don't seem to slow that motor down one bit. It's got 
tons of power, um, more than the full speeds. Um, everything about the flight characteristics was just a tad better. With these, everything was smoother. Um, no complaints at all about performance. The only thing that I would say might be a negative, um, I did have a crash on Maiden Flight. Uh, clipped the branch, hit the sidewalk. Uh, didn't bend any props or break anything on the quad, but I did notice that after the crash, uh, the bearings felt like they may have developed just a little bit of a flat spot. There's kind of a small click on both of the motors on this side, which surprised me. I would have expected on a minor crash, um, I would not have expected the bearings to have any sign of any sort of uh, dents or breakage on a minor crash. But anyway, it uh, doesn't seem to affect the performance. They're still super buttery smooth. Um, and very predictable. I like these motors a lot. I'd say they're worth it. Um, extra buck, couple bucks per motor. Why not? Um, the only thing I'd say to make them better is if you look at the big, the big uh, hype trains, they're really easy to take apart when you have to clean them or service them. You just take that Allen screw out, the bell pops off, and you can do whatever you need to do. Uh, these guys still use a C-clip, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, I mean, it seems like a lot of the smaller motors, all of them that I've used, uh, always use a C-clip. Might be the only way to do it, but it would be cool if there was a better way. Um, also, it would be cool if you could buy just the bells. Uh, that's a nice feature of the big hype trains. I uh, really like that because most of the time the bell takes the damage and the stator's fine. Um, so yeah, it would be cool if you know, you're know you buying a little bit more of an expensive motor up front, but if the cost of owning this over time, you know, buy a bell for five bucks or four bucks, um, you know, the cost of ownership is actually less if you buy something that's quality. Um, that would be nice. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't really have anything else negative to say about these motors. Um, I'd say run out and buy them if you've got a little quad like this. They're a lot of fun. Uh, they don't seem to kill the battery too hard, not any harder than anything else that I've run. Um, yeah.